this review is gonna be a lot of fun. Hi everybody, I am Jared Clark with Air Guns of Arizona. Thank you for joining us again. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at a one-of-a-kind pneumatic air rifle. This is the Western Air Gun Sidewinder. This is a rather compact offering here, coming in at 36 inches, but it gives you unrivaled power. It gives you the ability to function the gun in semi-automatic or fully automatic shot cycles and it packs a lot of punch with accuracy, precision, and fast shot count. This one is one of a kind. We're gonna show you everything this has to offer, all the good stuff that we normally do. So hopefully you stick around to the end. We'll be looking at the Western Air Gun Sidewinder. So as you can see, I have one of the Western Airgun Sidewinders in front of me, as you would get it straight from Airguns of Arizona or any other retailers. Um, but what you get is this nice, soft, zippered case. I really like this because a lot of times you get a cardboard box, you pull the gun out of it, and then it just takes up room in your garage. So with this soft case, you do have a nice zipper here, and you have plenty of room to put a scope on the gun and really use the case on a daily basis. So we'll take the gun out, and then the soft case has pockets as well for all your ammunition. It's a small thing, but it's one thing I really liked about the Western Air Guns. We have it in front of us here, the Western Air Guns Sidewinder. This one right here in front of me is set up in 25 caliber, but the gun is available in 22, 25, and 30 caliber options. As I talked about earlier in the video, this gun is one of a kind. It uses internally a valving system that is brand new to the market. Um, it's not a traditional valve where you have a hammer that runs into a valve stem that forces open air and allows it to rush down the barrel. It uses what's called hammerless technology. So you're not restricted by a physical hammer running into a valve. It uses air, it uses leverage, it uses a completely new way, a new style of valving to release the air. But what we're seeing is very impressive with the way it does it. You're able to get shot counts higher than I've ever seen before. You're able to get more power with less effort than I've ever seen before. So truly at the end of the day, after really putting this one under the microscope, this does kind of feel like the way of the future because it's new, it's more efficient. When I take it to the range at 20 yards, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But internally, hammerless valve design is really what makes this gun special. While we're talking about that, you'll notice there is no charging handle on this gun. I don't have a cocking arm anywhere on it. So that shows you kind of how you don't have to manually set the hammer. That's what a charging handle usually does on a pre-charge. Set the hammer so it can then run into the valve. There is no hammer, there's nothing to set. You just have a selector on the side here with this gun. So if I put it in safe, or if I put it in semi, it's ready to go. So it is, like I said, unlike anything we've ever seen, and I truly think it's something special. So let's go ahead, we'll start at the back of the gun, we'll move forward and highlight all the features here in the showroom, then we'll take it to 20 yards, do some shot count and some rough accuracy, out to 50 yards for some accuracy and probably some fully automatic fun. So we have one kitted out in front of us here. I'm gonna start at the back of the gun and we're just gonna highlight all the features real quick. Without a scope, the Sidewinder comes in at 7.9 pounds. Um, so in my opinion, very lightweight, very manageable as a hunting rifle if you need it to be. Um, but without a scope, eight pounds, I would consider to fall into the lightweight category. Back, very back, you have a rubber butt pad here. No adjustability to it. It's just a good gripping surface for your shoulder. In front of that, this is your selector. So as you can see, it has safe, it has semi, and it has full. And you have a little ball detent in there that you hear click when they go into place. So you don't wanna leave it in between. You just wanna click it, click it. Um, so safe, semi, self-explanatory. The gun will fire every time you pull the trigger. Full auto, it will keep firing until you let go of the trigger, basically. So that is really new to pre-charged air guns, but it is really capable of refilling the reg quickly and still maintaining a good rate of fire. It is incredibly impressive that it can fire 15 shots in 22, 12, and 30 in how fast it can. Most of the time you'll probably be shooting in semi-auto though, because even with the semi-auto function, you do not sacrifice a lot of accuracy. This gun is very pinpoint accurate as well as able to fast fire. Um, so that is right here, your selector for your mode of fire. This gauge right in front of you here is the regulator pressure gauge. So the one furthest back will read out what your regulator is operating at. 
And the regulator is adjustable. I'll show you that in a minute, but this one just reads what your reg is set at. So on this one, I'm just below 150 bar. Go straight down from there and you'll see this little knurled silver knob. This is a power adjuster. Um, so this gun is hammerless, but since we all know years and years of years of hammered valve designs. You can almost think of this as a hammer spring tensioner. Um, granted, it doesn't actually have a hammer, so there is no hammer spring. I, I believe, believe me, I know. But if we think of it as it's a quick power adjuster. So if I'm looking at the bottom here and it's got a nice plus and a minus. So that tells you if I want more power to turn it that way. If I want less power, turn it that way. So it is laser engraved for you right there. And if you're gonna be making adjustments with this, you really wanna have a chronograph or some sort of readout device, because basically what you can do is you can turn it up so much that you're not getting any extra velocity, but you're wasting a ton of air on every shot. So if you're gonna be messing with the adjuster and fine tuning that, make sure you have a chronograph or some way of verifying the adjustments that you're making so you don't pull the gun outside of factory spec causing problems. This is what makes the Sidewinder so special. Hammerless guns, this isn't the first hammerless gun. I'll, I'll be the first to say it. What it is the first though, it's the first hammerless gun that has a removable magazine. So usually it's been a trade-off. You could get a semi-auto, full auto, but you had to load it like a revolver, rotate one and rotate, not with the Sidewinder. You have a fully titanium magazine here that has a quick cover here. And so since this one's 25 caliber, there's 15 shots in here. You can keep spares loaded, you can, do whatever you want with the magazines, but it's a very simple process of just pushing it in. And now you can make quick mag changes. You can have two or three lined up where when one's done, you just take it and put another one in. A lot of possibilities with the removable mag. You can make the gun fully safe by have, not having a magazine in it. So that is brand new to the Sidewinder. It's really what separates it from everyone else right there is your removable mag. And then I did talk about it quickly, but that's just my mag locking pin. So when you put that in, you just wanna make sure that this guy slides back and locks up to keep the magazine in. The barrel is kind of in the neighborhood. You can't really see it. It's under these and then under the shroud, um, but these do use 23 inch TJ barrels. Good accuracy, good power, at, well, as we'll see at 20 and 50. That, that, that department is spot on. American made bar barrels, really good accuracy and they work really good with the pellets or whatever projectiles you try to use in them. Forward of that, so we're kind of moving down here. I'll go, we got um, AR style grips. This is an Ergo AR-15 grip that comes standard on the gun. You can, some people go with zero angles. Some people go with palm shelves. There's a lot of different things you can do, um, but it's a AR-15 style grip, so you can customize it how you like. In front of that, we are looking at the trigger. Right here is our trigger, and it is a bullpup, so the action's back here. The trigger's in the middle. There is a linkage arm that runs in between the two. The trigger is very manageable. You get used to it. I don't really have a solid complaint about the trigger. It's something you get used to and you will be able to be just as accurate as any other gun with it once you've had some time behind it. Right on top of the trigger, this is your second safety. So you have your selector in the back here that has semi safe and full auto. And then you have right here, this is just a trigger safety. So you have two mechanical safeties on the gun, the selector and then the trigger safety right here. So this has to be down for the gun to fire. If it's up like this, trigger won't engage. We'll come straight up here and you can see I have my callus uh, scope we use for doing some of our video work already on top, but you get a nice Picatinny top accessory rail. You get two Picatinny side accessory rails. And then I got my AccuTac bipod down here on the under Picatinny accessory rail. So one, two, three, total of four pick rails. Go crazy with accessories. Some people hang chronographs, some people hang lights. You got two options for accessories, one arguably for a bipod, one arguably for a scope. So lots of, lots of mounting options for this setup and you can really get it how you like. And then right below this, we're gonna look at this piece right here. So what this is, this is your regulator adjustment knob. So if you're gonna be changing the regulator pressure at all, or if you're gonna be adjusting your power dial, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you have a chronograph or some way of verifying the changes you just made. The regulator, if you need to turn it down, if I'm looking straight at it here, to turn it down, I wanna go clockwise. To turn it up, I wanna go counterclockwise. And you'll see there's these little holes all the way around. Put a small tool in there, and when you turn it, there's little detented clicks. So it'll go, tss, tss, tss. it'll click, and you'll hear 
and see the back regulator gauge go up as you do it. So you can turn the regulator up under pressure. If you need to turn it down, you need to completely degas the gun. So that's a quick walk through on the regulator adjustment. I am by no means encouraging you to adjust the regulator. Usually out of the box, they're, they're doing more than enough power. And usually out of the box, you can get everything you need with this wheel right here. So unless you're someone who really likes to get in there, I, I would say just leave the regulator alone. They're usually just shy of 150 bar and that gives you a, a great shot count and enough power to do almost anything you want with the gun. We have our second gauge right here. This one is gonna tell us how much pressure is available in the bottle. And why we're here, this is a 580 cc carbon fiber bottle. They are valved, so you can take it off and it will retain its pressure. And with that, you can also, you can upgrade to a 700 cc bottle. You can go to a 400 or a 300 if you wanted to go smaller, but it is valved. You can use different bottles. You could use spare bottles. It just makes it really easy for carrying and maintaining it out where you might not have access to a compressor. So bottle pressure, this right here is your quick connect. This is a standard uh, male quick connect on the gun. So any style female quick connect can snap right on there and it will be able to fill the gun. Speaking of filling the gun, this gun can be filled to 300 bar. And you never, like I said, there's no valving. There's no, you know, so there's no valve lockup. There, there's no downsides of too much pressure in this gun. It can really handle a lot of pressure and it can do it right out of the box. Right here is the carbon fiber shroud. Just so you see how it goes together. This is just the shroud here. We are looking at the barrel now right there. And then Western does sell, if you wanna go with a aftermarket moderator, they do sell a half inch adapter. So the way this is, you really can't put a zero DB or an aftermarket accessory, but you can get a piece that will replace your end cap on your shroud and it'll allow you to run any of your accessories. And Western does make that piece. So if you're interested in one of those, just ask whoever you're purchasing the gun through and they should know all about that piece. Up here at the very end, you have a barrel band. This just puts some tension between the end of your um, Picatinny rail and the bottle. So it helps keep everything on the bottom rigid. You notice there's not any flex hardly at all on that. So you can even get accessories way out here and that bottle clamp will help maintain rigidity throughout the system. The gun has a one year warranty from the manufacturer. So for the first calendar year of you owning the rifle, you are fully covered against any manufacturer defects. That's gonna wrap up all of the features that we can talk about on this gun. So we've talked about it and now we're gonna go shoot it, which everyone really wants to see anyway. So meet me back at 20 yards. We'll start shooting for shot count and accuracy. Then we'll stretch it out at 50, see what kind of group we can hold together. First thing we're gonna talk about with the Sidewinder before we start shooting it is loading the magazine. We would mentioned it in the showroom, but what you wanna do first is get this locking um, neural knob, let's call it, put that down. And then as you pull it out, the magazine will just naturally wanna come right out. So that's as simple as it is to get it out, is just push down forward on that pin, and then you'll have the magazine in your hand here. Um, the next thing you wanna do, this is a little magnetic cap right here. So you wanna go ahead and remove that. And with that out of the way, it's a very simple process of just dropping the pellet in nose first and doing it 15 times since we're in 25 caliber. Okay, and then the 15th one is on. You gotta remember this, and, and you'll notice it's got some laser engraving right there. That's the side that has to be facing up when you put it back in. So the last thing is just kind of line those teeth. I like to spin it and then those teeth will grab and it'll fall flat and you are ready to reload it in the mag. And that process is a little bit more difficult than unloading. Um, it goes in and then if you notice when I push it and rotate it, it's got a little bit of play right here. So I don't want it all the way in, I want it right there where it first starts to come out. And that's when, when, it, when it, so when I push it in, I pop it out just a hair and then that's where my arm will allow me to come in and lock it. It's not a difficult process. It's something that you will get used to as you go, um, but that's my biggest piece of advice for you is when you push it in, click it in all the way, and then you'll feel that little bit of play right there. You don't want it all the way in, you want it at that first little bit of relief point. And once you have that, that, that piston will slide right in and secure it in place. So we have 15 shots loaded in the magazine right now. These are the 33.9 grain Daystate Rangemaster Emperors. So what we're gonna do is our normal five shot group um, at 20 yards to see what kind of accuracy we get. So safety, we want this one in semi. And I want my trigger safety down. The gun is now hot. All I have to do is pull the trigger.
Okay, so that's the first five shots. You saw how effortless it was for me. The gun doesn't really recoil at all, and all five are right in the bullseye. So that's what I was expecting, because I've been playing with this gun a little bit. But what we're gonna do now, the much anticipated fully automatic. So we got five in the middle. Let's put the other 10 <laughs> near them. <laughs> so, so it opened up not much that's actually pretty good if you ask me for fully auto but you just saw right there gosh that's the most fun you can have with a pre-charged air gun it's not incredibly practical but a corvette isn't incredibly fuel efficient either and plenty of people love driving those so that is the full auto you can see the semi-auto with pinhole accuracy full auto it's still really impressive at 20 yards so we're gonna get some technical information for you about the Sidewinder being available in three calibers. What we're gonna do is get you a shot count as you could expect it out of the box. How many number of shots per fill versus what kind of power you could expect right out of the box. Then I'm gonna turn up the regulator, turn up the power wheel to the max and figure out what the power potential is of the, each caliber. So here's what you'd get it out of the box. Here's what it can be turned up to, and then also do a shot count for what you'd get out of the box. So it's gonna get a little technical, but bear with me and we'll give you all that information right now. So we did all three calibers for you, um, 22, 25, and 30. The target goal for velocity right out of the box is always 900 feet per second with a heavy pellet. So in 22 caliber, the average of 904 feet per second with the monster redesigns, it will get 130 shots. So if you crunch those numbers, that average is actually right at 46 foot pounds. So 130 shots at 46 foot pounds of energy. That's unheard of in my opinion, to get that high of shot count with the type of consistency we're seeing and the repeatability in each velocity number, I've never seen anything like it. So hammerless technology definitely is the way of the future in my opinion the maximum i could get if i crank the regulator and the power wheel till it's full tilt i was able to get 71.8 foot pounds with the 33.9 beasts so that's moving a 33.9 grain pellet at 977 feet per second in 22 caliber so huge power potential huge efficiency range completely blown away in 25 caliber stays pretty much the same. We were able to get an average of 899 with our 33.9 grain pellets, and that is right at 60.9 foot pounds. So huge amount of power. I got 96 shots with that amount of energy. So absolutely efficiency is off the charts in the 25 caliber as well. And the max I could get with the 33.9s was 1,035 feet per second. So that's just at 80.5 foot pounds of energy. Huge amount of power, huge amount of shots. 30 caliber stays about the same. I was able to get an average of 854, but I was using the 56 grain Zan projectiles. So at 854, that's 91 foot pounds. At 91 foot pounds, the gun got 62 shots per fill. So again, huge power, huge efficiency. And then on full tilt in the 30 cal, everything completely maxed out. We got an 81 and a half grain high arc hunter slug to move just over 800 feet per second. So if you have your calculator, that's 116 foot pounds of energy in a gun that is 36 inches in overall length. Absolutely blown away by the results in front of the chronograph with this gun. It really does speak highly of the hammerless valve technology and what it's capable of. And like I said, I think it's the way of the future. I think we'll see many, many more offerings coming with this technology inside due to these results. Okay, so I hope you found this as impressive as I did here at 20. Great accuracy, insane numbers over the chronograph. Last thing to do is meet you out at 50 yards and see what kind of group we can get out there. We're outdoors, we have the Western Airgun Sidewinder 25 caliber out here. We have a target downrange at 50 yards. We're gonna do a five shot group like we normally do. And then we're gonna have a little bit of fun with the select fire, the semi, the full mostly just have some fun. Hopefully it'll give you an idea of the performance of the gun in the process, but 50 yards downrange, let's get some group sizes, let's have a little bit of fun. Okay. Five out of the magazine, 33.9s. Let's get down there and take a closer look at it. These were coming straight out of the magazines. That's five shots. It's right at about an inch. This is my one inch reference coin. 
and we can almost completely cover the entire group. So center to center, good repeatability. It shows that the gun is more than capable for pest elimination, silhouette shooting, anything you could really think of with a pre-charged gun at 50 yards, that's doing it. As we've talked about, what makes the Sidewinder so cool is the ability to go between semi and full auto. So what we're gonna do now is go full auto at 50 yards. That is not bad at all. Holy smokes. All right, let's get down there and take a look at that 15 shot group. Here we are close up. This was 15 shots on full auto. It's kind of hard to hold the gun steady, but it doesn't produce as much recoil. But I mean, gosh, it, on paper, it, it always looks big, but we're talking about 15 shots in like two or three seconds tops that are all basically in the eight ring of this black target here. So I'm super impressed with that. The gun is so much fun to shoot. Um, might not be the most practical, like we've said, but it is the most fun you can possibly have with the pre-charged air gun, no doubt. So that's gonna do it for 50 yards. I will meet you guys back in the showroom and we'll tie this video up. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the Western Sidewinder review as much as I enjoyed doing it. We saw the insane amount of power that this gun has in every caliber, 22 caliber up to 70 foot pounds, 25 up to 80, 30 cal up to 116 on this very tiny, tiny little package. So a powerhouse, the shot counts that came with them, it, it's unlike any other gun that's ever been available. So a high power, b high shot count, c, come on. Fully auto, semi-auto. What more could you possibly want in terms of fun from a projectile launcher? So this gun has it all. I, I truly believe that in terms of most fun and most advanced air gun on the market, I think we just did the video review on it with the Western Sidewinder. I really hope you enjoyed it, guys. If you wanna get your hands on one of these, you can call Air Guns of Arizona or any of the Western retailers in the United States to try one. And if you do, I think you'd really enjoy it. I'm Jared Clark, hope you come back for the next one.